Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to track any changes made in Excel so you know who did it and when. So you can see here, I'm going to type in an employee name and right there I got the date time of the update and the Windows login name right there so you know exactly who did it. Now if I want to put in the position like this, that will also work. And you can pick and choose which columns are tracked and I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go here. We want to right click, we want to go on view code. We want to pop in this code. And I'm going to provide this for you so you can just do the same exact thing, copy and paste it in there. All right, so what we're doing is we're creating a range. Our target is basically right now uh, A right here. So anything in column A, that's going to be our range. So when something changes in A, it's going to do this. It's going to create a date timestamp right there in column C. And then the same thing for the Windows login name or username in D. So that's what's going on right there. And what we're doing here is we're defining cell as a range. And so that's that right there. So A. And so what, what's going on right there? Well, this is checking to see whether anything's changed in a cell or a range uh, and if it intersects with columns A. And so in this case, yes, it would. And so if it did, if something changes here, bam, there's a date timestamp, there's the username. If nothing does happen, that's where this else comes in here. And so basically C, column C and column D are just gonna be blank. Okay, and so when you have an if statement like this, you have to end it in VBA code. So that's what's going on there and right there. So essentially what's going on with next cell right here is it's it's going through a loop. And so if we had B, B right here too, it would go through A, it'd go through all of column A and then it'd go through column B. So that's essentially how that's working. And this here, this ends the whole function right here, okay? So that's how that works. Now let's go look at this. Remember, A is what's gonna be updated. C is where the date timestamp's gonna go. D is where the username's gonna go. So let's check it out. We'll type in Mike. So you can see, there we go, right there and right there. Now I don't have anything here, so watch this. Okay, so we're gonna have to create a separate range for that. All right, so we're gonna to wanna to go back to view code. So go back down here, we're gonna right click, view code. And what we wanna do is add that B column like this. So B to B. B to B. Is there anything that's updated in A or B or otherwise employee name or position is gonna now give us that date and timestamp as well as the username. So now if we type in test, watch this. Bam, there it goes. So while you're doing this, if you decide you wanna add a new column, say right here, sometimes it can crash if you just click on insert. So here's what I do. I just go back to the code and highlight it. I click on cut and I go back here and now there's no code temporarily. Now I'm gonna insert here a new column and I'm just gonna call it race, for example. Okay, so this changes everything now. So I gotta move the date timestamp to D and the username to E. So I'm gonna throw this code back in here now. So we're gonna right click, we're gonna go back to view code. As you can see here now, D is the date timestamp and E is the username. So we gotta change this to D, this to E, and you gotta do it right here too. Okay, okay. So let's say we don't want to have a date and timestamp as well as the username when someone updates the race. Only employee name and only position there. We can do that. So what we can do is we change this to C, C, and this here to C, C. And now, as you can see, when we update race here, Nothing happens, but if I type this, you can see that the time updated right there and ditto for right here. Okay, so you can see that, but nothing here. All right, lastly, I'm gonna show you how to add one more thing in F here. We're gonna add the operating system of the person who last updated it. So similarly, we wanna go back to the code here. We're gonna right click, view code, and I always like to just take it out of here. Otherwise, like I said, it crashes sometimes and I do not want that. So we're just gonna put a field here called OS, okay? And that's gonna go in F. And so we wanna go back to view code. 
I'm gonna pull this up so we can see it better. All right, and so this time what we're gonna do is cells, cell row F, the value is gonna be the operating system. So operating system, just like that, bam, and that's gonna go in F. And then we wanna just do the same thing down here. I think this might be faster like that, actually just a copy and paste. Change this to F. And now let's give it a try. Let's see if it gives us the operating system. All right, so I'm going to type in test three here. Oh, cool, there we go. I'm gonna say Mike Smith. We're just gonna update that. There we go, everything worked. So once you're done and you feel pretty good about everything, what you wanna make sure you do is save as a macro enabled file here. So. You can kind of see by default, you'll go to Excel workbook if you didn't open this as a macro enabled workbook. Um, but regardless, you just want to make sure it's saved as that. And so once you hit save, you're all good. Otherwise, if you don't, the code's not going to work. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd like more videos like this and have a good one, everyone.